A steal back to the outside position. We saw her in the middle a little bit towards the end of that match against Portland. And San Diego State gets the point. That's Emily Burns on the opposite side. 6'2 junior from Valencia, California. She's averaging less than a kill per but there is a lot of patchwork quilting going on by Deidre Collins Parker right now. Oh man, she's been dealt a, a lot of bad, sort of bad deals. Uh, injury after injury after injury. Delaney Taylor, who's who's setting now, uh, was penciled in to be a hitter this year. Instead, it's been like a domino effect of all the other positions. Tough uh, adjustments for all the Aztecs to have to make. The returning starting setter was supposed to be Gabby Peoples. She is rehabbing from a knee injury. They do expect her back by conference play. And that may change the dynamic a little bit. Allow Dietrich Collins Parker to put some people in their natural positions or at least their expected positions. But yeah, she is doing it with some smoke and mirrors in some spots right now. Yeah, she really is. She actually left Serena Dot Hudson home. She had an ankle problem. She's a middle. But normally would start. Here's Dunbar off the block and down. So six serving 11 here in set number one, and it is Dunbar retreating back to serve. She's the team leader in aces with 16 on the season. The very high toss. And how about that? Finding that deep corner. If you can get it past Tita Q in serve receive, you know you're doing something right. Yeah. She's got seven. And she's got 16 service aces on the year. Yeah, that was number 17 right there. But giveth and then taketh away. She sends the next one long. Rico Okino now coming in. She will retreat back to serve. 5-5 five, five sophomore out of Kalani High School. Two aces, 25 digs on the year. Good serve there. Aztecs out of system. Back bump set by Dunbar. And how about that? Hannah Turnland, 5'11 junior from Morgan Hill, California. Able to work it off the fingertips and down. Beautiful blind back bump set there by Dunbar. That was really a good bump set. Probably 25 feet away, and she put it right on the money. Lucia going high and away to Granato block back. How about a blind bump set to Granato from a cue? Great save in the back row by Sam McGrath. And then it is Turnlin hammering it off the hands again. She was one of the players pointed out by Dietrich Collins Parker prior to the match, who she felt was going to be necessary in order for them to have success tonight. And she's had two good swings in a row. This one high hands. Look how she sees the block in front of her, and she just hits it high and hard. Leva able to just get it over that proposed block of Deja Harris. And Hawaii gets the point and the side. They lead by four, and it will be Sarah Leva back to serve. I love Sarah Leva's serve. She ships all the way back as yeah. far as she can on the Terraflex and just pops it with a nice little knuckleball. No spin. Tough to pass. Yeah, that thing is in the air for a while. Turn one, hits it long. Was there a touch? No touch up front. It's a Hawaii back up a five spot. The serve of Leva's, you know, it, it, if it catches the right air conditioning, <laughs> <laughs> wins. It can be move all over the place. Good pass there by Dunbar, but the slide was ill-timed as Delaney Taylor tried to go to the step-out set to Deja Harris. 3-0 run here for Hawaii. It is 15 serving nine. No media timeout as Dietrich Collins Parker signaled for that early timeout when they went down 4-0. And that one misses the court wide, point for Hawaii. And now some distance between the Aztecs and the Wahine. Got a good look moments ago at Deidre Collins Parker in her 10th season. And she wants to talk things over some more. So she signals for a timeout. The three-time Hawaii All-American will talk things over with her team.
There's a special UH club for Keiki. Stop by Papa John's Pizza to join the UH Kids Club. Purchase a large pizza and children receive an official club t-shirt and a host of other benefits. Join the UH Kids Club today. How about the kill percentages? Telling the story right there. 312 for Hawaii. Flatlining it are the Aztecs. Remember why he made by seven out of the timeout. And Harris so good at just placing it to the open spot. That was a well-placed shot. Leave a little bit late to get there, and she's here as Robin and Mo Santos right now. <laughs> In a laughing way. It's like, hey, girl, if you want to keep serving, you're going to play some defense after you serve. So here's Lauren Teeter out of Redondo Beach, California. 5'7", sophomore, getting ready to serve. You'll see it going backside. Angel Gaskin, her first swing of the night is a good one. Through the block and down. She's getting better and better with that swing of sheet rotation, especially when there's just two people passing. It's just uh, Okino and Tito Akiu. Those two are really getting to know each other back there and covering a lot of territory. Oh, great serve by Faith Maafala. Free ball coming for Hawaii. Maafala picks and chooses, goes to Burns in the middle, dug up tight to the net, and then put over on the second touch. Well done there by Delaney Taylor. As you mentioned, Taylor initially expected to be a hitter in this program. This is already her third collegiate team. She started her career as a freshman at Middle Tennessee. Sophomore year was at Oregon State, and here she is at San Diego State. And brave gets all you can do. You can't, <laughs> can't go four. I think three is the limit. The How about the roof there? The killer combo of Harris and Dunbar. And they are able to return that McKenna Granato hit back to sender. 12 serving 17. Burns is blocked. Good cover there by Okino. Burns a second time. Harris got a lot of fingerprints on that one. Here she is on the slide. Puts it deep. And it's a point for the Aztecs. Aztecs looking sharp in transition. Digging a lot of balls. Lining up a little better on Natasha Burns. Touching more of her attacks. Malfala has to go a long way to bump set Yosia, who is blocked and roofed. Deja Harris starting to take things over here in this middle portion of set number one. She's got three kills and four blocks, and Robin Amo Santos calls for a timeout. Robin Amo Santos sees uh, her lead dwindling. For those of you who just joined us, Hawaii's been ahead by as many as seven. And Dietra Collins' team snuck their way back in there. Now it's only three. They're playing much better volleyball now. And Hawaii struggling a little bit, trying to terminate. Let's take a look at tonight's Jack Fact. Outrigger success. Hawaii has never finished with a losing record in the Outrigger Volleyball Challenge. The Rainbow Wahine have gone 3-0 17 times. Finished second at two and one six times. So coming off of that five set defeat in the hands of Portland the other night, they are hoping to finish with a two and one record once again. Portland, by the way, yesterday was able to seal up the Outrigger Challenge title with a three set victory over Idaho. The Pilots still unbeaten here in 2018. Hawaii and five beat a good Idaho team yesterday in the three. for bricks, repair, and the purchase time. That was part of the challenge for Hawaii, right? They had the day off to sort of regroup. Some of the players, I am told, went down to watch their fellow student athletes for the UH football team get that win against Rice at Aloha Stadium. But they had 48 hours to try to regroup from what was a bitterly disappointing loss to Portland in five sets. Especially when they were down just 9-8 in the fifth, and then all of a sudden the wheels came off and Portland just went on a run and ended up winning 15-8 in the fifth. That was, I know they were disappointed that they did not play as well as they would like to have the last half of the, that fifth set. The Aztecs have fought their way back to within three. Out of the timeout, outside, it's Yosia. And a great dig there by McGrath. Dunbar off the block and down, and San Diego State is running right now. That's five straight Aztec points. in the back row that time from McGrath. A cue 
unable to conjure up that pass. She and Okino in that same area, a little too crowded, and that is a service ace for Lauren Lee. She is a transfer from Rice University. Just a sophomore, stands at five feet tall. At least that's what she's listed. Granato off the block, advantage Aztecs. Here's Harris on the slide down the line, wide, no touch. And Hawaii able to get out of that very sticky rotation. Seattle State rally finally comes up short. That's been a bugaboo for Hawaii. They get stuck in rotations here and there. Even when they've built up leads, their opposition has been able to fight their way back into it. You'll see off the blocking down. Once again, using the outside block in his hands, you'll see it's so effective at that. Hitting 380 coming into this tournament. Her numbers have dropped a little because teams are starting to block her a little better. And, uh, she just didn't uh, hit as well, especially on night number one. So she's down to hitting in the mid 300s. Dunbar blocked back. This time they go middle to Harris off the Burns touch. Rattled around and returned by Granato. Dunbar, the set kind of low. She had to roll it over. All of a sudden, the advantage for Hawaii. Burns in the middle. Short arms it and still gets the kill. That set a little bit too low for her, but she found a way with those low forearms of hers. And she gets it down. And look at that, no approach, just taps it down. No need for a jump when you're 6'5", I guess. Natasha Burns doing her best Maglio impression. She's already got 11 attempts, five kills, hitting 364. What a save by Granato. Mafala slaps it across. Here's Harris in the middle, big swing. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. And it's a point for San Diego State. Well, much of the discussion here in the last 48 hours was what would Hawaii do with regard to that middle position? How can they get that position to be more productive, to contribute in a greater way. We are seeing that here so far tonight. Castillo, that was a hammer. An incredible dig by Lauren Lee. What a chance here for Hawaii. Mafala middle to Burns, paint brushes it. Aztecs on the return, but it's Dunbar and Deja Harris colliding in the same space, and it's an easy point for Hawaii. And Hawaii got lucky there with that confusion. Even San Diego State, you know, to their credit, they've had so many lineups and so many injuries that they, in the early season, they will have miscommunications like that. Tita Q forces the overpass. Mahalo Nui Loa, says Casey Castillo. Off the serve by Tita Q. Tough serve by Q. She's the one who deserves all the credit. There. Nice tap down by Casey, but give some credit to Akia right there. Force this overpass. Backs it up with an ace. That's the third ace of the season for Tita Q, who has just fit in oh so exceptionally since transferring over from Texas Tech. Fit in oh so well that she uh, earned herself a scholarship. Yeah, it only took her two weeks. <laughs> Slide. That was Tamia Reeves getting dug up. Leva is dug up, meanwhile, by Lauren Lee. And that one put down by Ashlyn Dunbar. The Dunbar, when Dunbar gets hot, she can really invite it down. She needs to get, get to find her rhythm. 18 kills against Idaho, 13 kills against Portland. Hawaii by five, and that's going to be a back row attacker violation called against Mahal of the pass by Granato, just too tight to the net. So 19 serving 23. Delaney Taylor with the serve. Good pass that time by McKenna, and Leva pounds it down. And it's a little ball for Hawaii here in set number one. Leva is so quick, so athletic, gets up so fast, and you get that quick arm swing as well. Did a better job of controlling her attacks. She has a little, little problem with her cutback shots going out a lot, and she's now 
doing a much better job of keeping those in. You'll see it into the net. Yeah, Leva, it's not an offensive issue for her five kills at 333, no errors against Portland. The problem was that quick tempo offense of the pilots, it really got away from the middle blockers for Hawaii. It was more of a defensive issue. That's why Castillo ended up there at the end of that fifth set. Oh, that's a fantastic serve by Dunbar. Her second one of the night. 18th on the season. I wonder if she's got 18 on the year. Robin Amos Santos wants to take no chances. She signals for a timeout. Bit of a smirk, though, on the grill of Robin. A lot of top spin. Falls right on the line. Yeah. Fresh about that one. That was a great serve. So while we have a break in the action, let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. And we're looking at Hawaii career solo blocks. Now, why would we be doing something like that? Well, because the head coach for San Diego State happens to be second all time in program history. Suzanne Eggie, who was a fantastic one, she's number one, but Dietra Collins, Number two, and look at number three, Angelica Jungquist, who happens to be on the bench as an assistant coach Why, for I think, Hawaii. I think Angelica and Dietra would have had a better chance if they played 13 years like Aggie did. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Oh, yes, I didn't notice that, yeah. <laughs> she had, she had uh, a lot of medical red shirts in there. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the NCAA <laughs> rules were so much more lax <laughs> <laughs> between 1984 and 1997. Yeah, that should have said 84 to 87. Good pick up there, yeah, C-Man. Thanks for good <laughs> Always willing to point out other people's mistakes. <laughs> my, my wonderful partner, Chris McLaughlin. <laughs> I knew there was some reason why she had so many more blocks yeah. than anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Scott Robbs, I think, put it well, though. Dietrich Collins Parker, formerly Dietrich Collins, obviously, when she was at the University of Hawaii, not just one of the best Rainbow Wahine volleyball players ever, just one of the best volleyball players ever. Here's Leva on the slide, off the block and down. And Hawaii out of the timeout, able to put a punctuation mark on set number one. It was the set dominated by Hawaii's middle hitting. Five kills for Natasha Burns, three kills for Sarah Leva. They'll swap in set two coming up. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Hawaii Honda Dealers. And there is a look at the Circle of Honor plaque here located on the concourse at the San Sheriff Center for Dietra Collins. Now Dietra Collins Parker, three-time All-American at UH, two-time National Player of the Year, led the Rainbow Wahine to consecutive national titles in 1982 and 83, ABCA Hall of Famer, member of the U.S. Olympic team in 1988. You name it, she did it in this sport. You know, one of the most amazing awards she got, Kenora. I mean, she's also in the ABCA Hall of Fame. I think you mentioned that. but. Uh, the Broderick Cup Award she got one year, which goes to the most outstanding female athlete in any sport. Yeah. Your attention, my Well, she was fantastic in the middle back in those years. Natasha Burns, pretty fantastic, at least tonight in set one, C-Mac. Unbelievable. Five kills, only one error and 12 tries. And then blocking as well. Picks up one of two blocks right there. Just doing it all. We'll see if she can continue and sustain that kind of effort. One of the things I think that uh, San Diego State might do is start committing in the middle, jumping, you know, with Burns to make sure she doesn't uh, have even more kills. A switch at the libero so position for San Diego set. State. Lauren yeah. Lee, who we saw scoop up a couple of heavy-handed shots by Hawaii, she has now put on the white jersey, so she is the libero. And the opening serve by Cameron Machado is wide of the floor. Machado, by the way, another one of those transfers here on this roster. Transfer from Utah, where she played alongside former Kahuku standout Adora Anai last year. A team that went to the Sweet 16. Yeah, number, number two center on that team that uh, won two matches against each other. He's finally lost to Texas in the third round. But she was looking to have a good career there and then decided to come back home to San Diego. An ace to get things started offensively for Hawaii, so it is two serving zero. And sails now 
The Aztecs now with the point of the side out. You mentioned Deacon Collins Parker yet to defeat the University of Hawaii as a head coach. She has coached previously at UNLV and Cornell. And we asked her, you know, what she thought about this being such a special matchup with two of the all-time greats to ever play at the University of Hawaii. Now opposite sides at the head coaching position. As Castillo is dug up, and she said, well, you know, it's not necessarily something when you're in the mix of all of this and you're focused on the task at hand, it's not really something that you are preoccupied with as Deja Harris shuts the door on Noreen Yosia. Another one-handed dig right there. We saw two by Akilia tonight. We saw one there by McKenna Granado. What Deidre Collins Parker did comment on, though, was, hey, look, I think what's great about it is, you know, we're two alums, and we really understand what the challenges are in taking over a program that is at the mid-major level, especially in this day and age of college volleyball and the discrepancy between the haves and have-nots, which continues to get wider and wider. As Deja Harris once again putting up the wall and San Diego State jumps in front. Backside, here's Yosia against the double block, pinballed around and returned. Hawaii on the attack. Maafala goes backside. It's Yosia again, the dink, touched up by Harris. Put over on the second touch by Cameron Machado, and that caught Hawaii off guard. Machado, even with the bad wrist there, when she had wrist um, problems, she's only had one practice so far. She's been out the whole time. During double days. Yeah, it was activated two days before they got on the plane to head out to Hawaii for this outrigger challenge. Harris off the block, diving save there by a Q. High bump set to Castillo. Dunbar able to work it back in the air. She gets the set on the outside, is blocked back. Dunbar a second time, winds up, tried to get cute with it into the twine and went. This young lady right here gets a vote from this guy for Hall Tournament, I'm telling you. She's been phenomenal. Passing half the court and then just digging lights out, night in and night out. Good serve there as well. But the kill by Emily Burns. Yes, San Diego State has a Burns on their side as well. But Emily Burns, a transfer from the College of the Canyons, that time getting the point for the Aztecs. Getting back to Tita Q, you know, she's averaging 5.33 digs per set in this tournament, a 22 dig performance against Idaho, 26 digs against Portland the other night. Oh, that was a hammer dropped by Sarah Leva. And the always accompanying ear-to-ear -ear smile as well. Nobody knows that. Everybody. Everybody should learn how to celebrate like Leva, you know? <laughs> yeah. Live like Leva. I can see the bumper stickers already. She's so happy. That's a good dig there by Yosia. Gaskin got blocked back by Dunbar. Scramble play here. Castillo with a good swing on it. Game on crew talking about trying to find that other Terminator, Casey Castillo, on any given night could possibly step into that role. And she hits it in the right area, area six right there. San Diego State taking area one, taking up area five, running the line digger up to, to get the tips, and Castillo found the open spot. About the save there by Gaskin. Here's Castillo again, right through the hands of the block. Lisa Castillo, who's been averaging 2.3 kills per set, that's third on the team, hitting 221 on the season. Remember that Casey's from uh, Oceanside, California. She's playing against a school that she probably could have gone to if she wanted to. As that substitution, number 16, the Amy Taylor. Serving for number one, Emily Burns. Not in at six here. Delaney Taylor back into the match here for San Diego State. Oh, that's a pass tight to the net, played off the net by Yosia. Sets up Castillo, who then fires a missile. 
Wow. Jason just came out of nowhere there. That inside angle. I don't think San Diego State Block was ready for this. They were over there taking her line away. Giving her all kinds of cross-court room. She even got a smile from Robin Amos Santos. Don't see that very much. No, you don't. <laughs> Rico Aquino into the net on the serve, though. It's been kind of a topsy-turvy type of serving tournament for Hawaii. The Ten aces against Idaho to open the outrigger challenge, and then a whole lot of service errors, especially ill-timed service errors the other night against Portland. That one put down by Tamia Reeves, 6'1 junior from Carrollton, Texas. She's been on an amazing high school team. They were state champs and number two in the country. That's a pretty good volleyball team she was on in high school. Hebron High School. Served by Dunbar is wide. Inching along here in set number two. The Ringo Wahine taking the first stanza 25-21. Pass there by Lee. Outside. Turnlin popped up there by Yosia. Renato, that was pounded off the block. Hawaii still on the attack. It's Burns. That was not pounded, but it was placed perfectly. And Hawaii gets the point. They jump back up ahead. Well, the Aztecs just have not found a solution for that young lady there. And Natasha Burns, six kills already. We're only halfway through the second set. Nine kills against Idaho, hit 667. Even in the loss against Portland, hit 318 with 10 kills, her season high. It's just been a good run for her here the last few matches. Turnlin winds up and uncorks one wide. What you up to? Lita getting back there and scoring points. Every time it's her turn to serve back there, she's getting points for the Rainbow Wahine. Serving from deep. Gets it in again. Backside. Good adjustment on the approach there by Tamia Reeves. The set went a little bit further towards the pin than what she was anticipating. And was still able to get up and rip it. Reeves only hitting a buck 60 this year. You saw, see by the adjustment there, she knows how to keep the ball in place. She was the number two kill percentage player on the team last year. Roll shot by Gaskin, sniffed out by Lee. Back row set, and it's Dunbar who's dug up. Outside Granato, quick approach, Dunbar pops it in the air. Turnlin from way off the net, two-handed in the air by Okino. So here is Gaskin, and it hits the pin. Tried to go line. All of a sudden, we're knotted up again here in set two. Hawaii hitting 100 here in the second set compared to 125 for the Aztecs. So neither team exactly setting the world aflame. Net violation, though, against San Diego State, and more good things happening any time they have been setting Natasha Burns in the middle. That's a really kill for Burns. She keeps on doing it. <laughs> Amazing. It's just something about her, right? First off, you can't coach 6'5", right? Yeah. Uh, and she's long, too. She's long arms. Good dig there by Malfala. Joust at the net, and even the long arms of Byrne couldn't quite reach what Deja Harris was able to touch as she won that battle. Oh, such a veteran up there, fifth year senior. Three time on Mountain West. Knows how to handle those tight plays at the net. As you'll see it. Did she touch it off of the block? No, she did not. Tried to, miss the block, miss the court. And San Diego State back on top. Solid response here by Deidre Collins Parker's Aztecs in this second set. They bounced back well, considering how the first set got off to a very slow start. You'll see uh, off the block and out. She tools it again. 
See out of Torrance, California, all the Big West Conference first teamer the last two seasons. Remember, that was when she was exclusively a setter. Except for in spots last year, but here she is playing a little bit of everything for this Wahine team in 2018. Burns laying the smackdown. I think they're going to keep setting Burns until her arm falls off. Okay? Or needs ice packs in between points. She is getting everything I felt like I can give her. The passing's been great. I give credit to Arkeo for giving good transition passes right on the dime. Turnlin through the block. Oh, what a great job by Hawaii's defense to return it. Harris on the step out. Got it through Castillo and down. Asia Harris, again, out of Las Vegas, Nevada. She was the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Nevada back in 2013. Certainly a high-profile prospect. That's a pretty good athletic lineage, too. Mom played basketball at UNLV, played the WNBA, played the Canadian Olympic team. Dad played football at UNLV and the CFL. So, she the genes going. Yeah, she was destined for a strong sports career. It sounds like as Casey Castile gets another kill. Asia Harris, it's her fifth year in the program. She was able to receive a medical red shirt back in 2014. She only played one set that year. As Dunbar goes off the block and into the antenna. And we are tied for the 10th time here in set number two. That one set in 2014 played by Deja Harris was here. It's to one, right. So coming full circle to some degree here, Deja Harris, who serves it across. Castillo. <laughs> you call it a whiff, or sort of a semi whiff. She, she knows it. Okay. <laughs> call it whatever you want. It's a point for Hawaii. Time out. Welcome back. A few members of the University of Hawaii football team in the house. They are now 3 and 0 on the season with another victory over Rice. And what was amazing about that was you kind of got the sense from some of the players' reaction and even from Nick Rolovich himself that they weren't all that satisfied with the performance, yet they scored 43 points, won by two touchdowns. It's a sign of the times, perhaps, here in 2018 for that program. Amazing. Sure fun to watch, aren't they? Oh, man. Just kind of a different vibe around here when the football team is back in business. The Rainbow Wahine in business up two. The violation goes against San Diego State. A little bit of a confusing look coming, though, from the top official, Wayne Lee. Here we see the net camel show. The ball is up there. Yeah, the ball's 50-50. It's half on their side, half on Hawaii's side. So Wayne Lee kind of gave the arms pointed upwards, the shoulder shrug, the Dan Hiranaka. They decided to replay the point. Yeah, I think that uh, Delaney Taylor's front row, that's why it was a, it was a mistake they made. That, was, that is exactly what happened. You're right. The look from Wayne Lee was sort of asking Dan Hiranaka to check the rotation. And as it turned out, she went up there at the top of the net legally. So they replayed the point. Exactly. Now Delaney Taylor's back to serve. Which means she was front right when there was supposed violation. So 15 all here in set two. Gaskin. That went off with a shoulder. Gave Lauren Lee a little bit of shoulder burn. So Gaskin, the transfer from Maryland out of Tampa, Florida, just starting to gain more and more traction, I think, and a greater comfort level each and every time out. There are other parts of her game that I think she is being asked to participate in and improve in that maybe she wasn't so relied upon over there when she was with the Terrapins. Here's Granato off the block. Good cover there by a Q. Middle set, Leva. And that's going to wind up in the seats. Wilson, almost all the long rallies. If Hawaii gets a good pass, it's more the middles that are terminating and stopping the rally as opposed to an outside attacker. 
Lieb is hitting like 800 tonight. <laughs> Burns is hitting like 500. Between the two of them, they're hitting for just monster numbers. Hawaii oh, by two. They go slide to Reeves, one handed in the air by Yosia. So Granato goes cross court to Gaskin. High hands and down. How about the set from Granato? Pushing it all the way across court. Future Collins call a timeout. Hawaii by three. Welcome back, Hawaii by three. You were commenting on the middle hitting numbers for Hawaii. Natasha Burns, eight kills, hitting 438. Sarah Leva right there, five kills, six swings, no errors, hitting 833. So between the two of them, they're hitting <laughs> almost 600. Yeah, they're in beast mode, let's just say that. Yeah. Outside, Dunbar, down the line. Saved momentarily by Yosia, but not for long. Ashley Dunbar serving. Ashley Dunbar. Dangerous from the service line. But Okino able to handle it well. Here's Gaskin. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. Point for Hawaii. And that is kill number four for Angel Gaskin. She gets closer to in my, in my opinion. From the beginning of the season to now, she's really changed uh, her, her arm swing. She's. Uh, this seems much more competitive, much more ready. The coach is better. That one, easy pickings, thanks to the overpass for Natasha Burns. Largest lead of this second set for Hawaii. Credit that one, though, to Leva. So the two middle hitters actually collaborating on that Hawaii point. Exactly. And it's an ace. Was up there for what seemed like an eternity. She's so far back. I love, I love how she, uh, she just gives this ball a good poke. Allows the air conditioning. Uh oh. Then she hits Burns with that hat. I'm just singing her praises, then all of a sudden yeah. goes the ultimate bocce. Yeah. First she's setting up a Burns put down, <laughs> and then she's. Pinging Burns in the dome. <laughs> 17 serving 21. You'll see a high ball to Gaskin off the block and down. You're right. I think what we have seen in terms of Gaskin's strides from that first weekend against Kansas State is looking so much more confident. And again, for her, Robin Amosanto saying it's it's just the other elements of the game. She's going to be fine as a hitter, but we would like to see her improve a little bit defensively and even at the net from a blocking standpoint. What are some of the things that are asked of these Rainbow Wahine players that maybe depending on their position at other institutions, other programs, not so much discussed. And a timeout taken by Dietra Collins Parker here with Hawaii up by six. By the way, while you were talking, Guess who got a kill? Natasha Burns. <laughs> who else? It's, it's happening almost too fast for us to report. Sarah Leva, though, having a pretty decent impact as well. We mentioned the five kills on six swings. And she is still blemish free here tonight. Hitting 833. Keep the ball playing much more effectively. And she's got that serve working where she's gone back and served a lot of points for Hawaii, including an ace. Leva going way back with Robin Amos Santos. Played for Robin in the Imiike Volleyball Club. So there was a history there. And a great story that we did in the game on portion of the broadcast the other night where Leva was reminiscing on those times and found herself due to academic desires here at the University of Hawaii. Realizing there was still a year of eligibility, somebody tipped off Robin Amol Santos, said, um, Sarah Leva is here on campus in Manoa. The connection was made, they reunited, and here she is now starting in what is her senior year for Robin Amol Santos. Life is funny sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, remember, remember she said she had a chicken skin moment the first night when she was in there. She was out there and she was announced as a starter. She's 
this is my, this is like my small kid yeah. dream. And all of a sudden, here I am doing this. Pretty amazing. Hitting 833. <laughs> wow. Remember, those are like baseball, you know, getting percentages. <laughs> Here's Yosia off the block. Good chase down there by Dunbar. Right side. That's Aaron Gilchrist with the swing. McHugh picks it up. Granato. Able to slam it by the block. And it's aloha ball for Hawaii here in set number two. The Rainbow Wahine have scored three straight. And Faith Mahafala will try to see if she can bring this second set to a close. Tight to the net. Granato says Mahalo and Nui Loa. And Hawaii takes the second stanza 25 17. And they lead two sets to none. And on this final night of the Outrigger Challenge, the Rainbow Wahine will have an opportunity to crack open the broom closet. Here's a look at your McDonald's match statistics. So what you have two sets to none, Dean uh, C Mac, and really cleaning things up in the hitting department in that second set. Great kill percentage, hitting 324, but look at those 32 kills. Guess what? Out of those 32 kills, 15 of them from the middle attacker, middle attacker serve uh, uh, from Leva and from Burns. Blocking San Diego did a pretty good job at the net, beating Hawaii 6-2, and uh, the rest about even. All right, so Hawaii's middle attack obviously very impactful. Interestingly enough, McKenna Granato, who has reached double figures in kills every match so far this season, just two kills for her. She's flatlining it. But that's a good thing for Robin Amos Santos to know that even with McKenna Granato not having her most prolific night, if the middles can have this level of contribution, that means well for well, this team going forward. That was the one question I asked her before the game. I said, who's going to start in the middle tonight? She says, you go figure. <laughs> yeah, she that's said, right. She said, she said uh, we'll see after warm-ups who's looking good, and then I'll let you know. It's huh? been that much up in the air in the middle position, and so I'm, Robin Almos Santos can't be happier right now that she's got 15 kills out of the middles, and they're hitting about 600 combined. So she must have picked the right two people, I guess, huh? I would say so, and the emphasis was on that position again with Deja Harris on the other side of the net. Especially coming off of what Shayla Heft, the Maui girl, playing in the middle for Portland the other night, dominating against Hawaii in that five set defeat of the Rainbow Wahine. Especially coming off of that, I think, even more so, this coaching staff was focused on, all right, what do we do to try to solidify things in the middle? And at least here so far through two sets tonight, uh, it has worked very well. Yeah, they're doing a pretty good job defensively, too. Defensively too. Um, they're even serving really well. She's got an ace. So, uh, uh, also, they're doing a pretty good job at the net, touching a lot of balls, getting a couple blocks. So here's the serve for San Diego State, and it's Natasha Burns getting right back to work. 11 kills for her now. That's a season high. First only player on the floor with double figures in kills. Go figure. What, what a night she's having. In fact, the 11 kills matching her career high, which was set last year against Long Beach State. Almost had a roof to go along with her stat line. Here's Yosia. Was there a touch? They did not call the touch. Yosia and company feel like there was a touch. Robin Amos Santos contemplating whether or not to challenge that. Let's see if we can tell. Hard to tell. I don't know if that one would have been overturned. Here's Castillo blocked. Great diving cover there by Granato. Castillo a second time roll shot. And that's going to work out. Casey Castillo has looked very fluid in her approach and arm swing here throughout this match. Yeah, she's checking some, uh, some better shot selection as well. Sometimes beach rolling it as opposed to tipping it and putting the ball deep into the court. Trying to find that area six, which I think is wide open in San Diego's defense. Nice job by Hawaii defensively. It'll be return. Middle set. And that is Reeves getting it down. 
So 3-2 Aztecs up here early on in set number three. The Rainbow Wahine up two sets to none. Good sweep by Reeves and cutting it back and her cross court was taken, so she just cut it back across her body. Great shot. You'll see a flat-footed pumps it long. So Aztecs by two for serving two. San Diego State preseason picked to finish third in the Mountain West Conference. It's Colorado State that is the favorite going into 2018. High ball to Castillo. That hit the pin. Once again, as happened in set number two, San Diego State off to a quick start. in the volume of Tad. Here's Castillo, roll shot. It's going to be returned, but it's going to be a free ball here for Hawaii. Can they take advantage? Backside, you'll see it. The block had informed, but that is a fantastic save in the back row there by McGrath. Cross court bump set goes to Castillo up over the block and down. She goes OTT to get Hawaii. Back to side. One of Casey's better swings this year. I guess the double block, four hands across. And she just hits it deep into the corner. Great shot. Yeah, she has taken some quality swings here in this match. And that's an ace. Speaking of quality swings, Noreen Yosia with the ace. That is her team leading eighth. Dunbar off the block and down. Actually, Dunbar now looking to kill her for number seven. Unfortunately, she's got five errors to go along with that. She's looking sharper there, though. You'll see her to Gaskin, wasn't on point, and so Gaskin had to just touch it over. Advantage Aztecs, but a good dig there by Granato. Here's Castillo. Casey Castillo. Swing by Casey that time, especially because she adjusted her, her uh, shot selection there. They're starting to take her across court, so she goes, okay, if you're gonna do that, I'll just go back down the line, cross body, great shot. Five serving six. Diving save a cue. And a free ball coming here for the Aztecs. They go right side. That's Gilchrist popped up by Okino. Gaskin, the southpaw swinger, strikes it pure. And we're tied at six. Gaskin does it from like this six or eight foot line. That set was ball a little far back. She goes up and gives a good swing cross court. Surprised they didn't take her cross court away instead. Uh, and when they didn't take her cross court away, she just goes to her favorite spot. Overpass, Granato couldn't make it happen for Hawaii though. But then Gaskin and Leva up at the net, able to provide the resistance. I think Gaskin got most of this one. Let's see, I get right into Gaskin's right hand. And right off the dome of Burns. Oh, good job pulling the string there by Tamiya Reeves. We're tied again, inching along once more here in set number three. And it'll be Lauren Lee to serve. Under Armour All-American Honorable Mention in high school. She serves it into the twine on that occasion. And here's Leva. Natasha Burns back into the front row here for Hawaii. Right side. And 
that is Gilchrist hitting it into the pin. And it's a point for Hawaii, so just a smidge of breathing room here for the Rainbow Wahine in this third set. Gilchrist just biting off more line than she could chew there. Didn't need to cut it that thin. That's Harris in the middle. One hand save there. You'll see a Burns tried to set it. Unable to do so cleanly. You gotta love the chutzpah there on that play by Burns. Of all the sets that I've seen here attempt, most of the time it come pretty cleanly, but at that time, Granado was right, actually right next to her. I think it bothered her that there was someone so close to her. Right side, Gaskin. Off the block and down. Gaskin having easily her most efficient offensive match as a Rainbow Wahine. That is now seven kills for her, and she is hitting up over 500. That's Turner. Put a little extra hot pepper sauce on that one. Good swing by Hannah Turner, number three in kills last year, and number two in kills per set last year. Well, what you buy one, you'll see it from off the net, tried to roll it over. So Aztecs in transition, high ball, goes to Dunbar. And Dunbar gets it done. Point for San Diego State. We're tied again at 10. Ashlyn Dunbar, all around athlete, back in high school at Clear Falls High School in Texas, all star basketball player, district champ in both the high jump and the discus throw. Her dad, Lewis, played for the Harlem Globetrotters and, in fact, is now the director of player personnel for that organization. Mafala pushing Burns out of the way to set up you'll see a diving save by Lauren Lee. Burns popped it up with the left hand and Granado couldn't get there. So things getting a little raggedy here for Hawaii in set three. And McGrath with the float serve. McHugh handles it well outside. It's Granato, solo blocker against her, but Lee scoops it up. And then Deja Harris bounces it off of the Terraflex, and Robin Amos Santos has seen enough. Four straight San Diego State points prompts a Hawaii timeout. The Aztecs feeling pretty good. Hi. We knew Deja Harris was going to be a force for San Diego State. Right now, seven kills hitting 375, and she has the Aztecs surging a bit here in this third set, C-Map. She's really got it going on right now, finding the open spots in the court. She's also got a couple of blocks. She's got an ace. Kind of doing it all. Really inspired as a senior, the underclassman that she's playing with. But across the net, she has Natasha Burns, who has been bettering the veteran Deja Harris's output here tonight. As we return to live action, Burns putting the finishing touches on her 12th kill. That is a new career high for Natasha Burns. Oh, that was a hammer there by Ashlyn Dumble. But Burns with 12 kills on 20 attempts. That's also tops on this Hawaii team here so far in this match at 550. Follow. Bump set to Castillo. Down the line and in. Savvy swing there by Casey Castillo. Going into that deep corner. You know, it's 6 3, but when she extends and contacts the highest point possible, she can go over pretty much any block. That time she did just that and picked the right spot in the court. Outside Dunbar, scooped up by a Q. Castillo. Put some smoke on it again. Come on, she just is everywhere. Watch, watch this. Uh, there's Casey going over the block again, but just prior to that, Akio made the dig and allowed Casey to get that kill. And then Akio goes into the net, but 
McHugh now with 11 digs. Her digging numbers have been massive here in this tournament. In fact, all year long, averaging 4.76 digs per set on the season, but over 5.3 in this tourney coming into this match. Here's Delaney Taylor with the serve. Leva. Through the block, but it's kept alive. And now Dunbar diving save Granato. Maafala, middle to Leva block back. Granato right there. Maafala, backside, Yosia. Let's see what's great about Yosia. She's known to tool the end blocker's hands. So now the teams are starting to line up on the antenna and saying, okay, they're daring her to use her hands. And when she sees a hole in the block, it's where the middle blocker's late getting there, she'll go that way and not go on the line for the hands. And it's an ace. I don't remember she was the, uh, the player of the year in the country, which her freshman year and her junior year, the setter of the year in the nation. So there's a reason she does, serves up aces like this and makes the smart plays that she does. Ball ball IQ off the chart. Another hammer serve. Dunbar flat-footed, two-handed by Granato. Bump set, you'll see it, a Castillo. Misses the court line. Tried to slice it down that line. Just a little inaccurate that time, and it will be Dunbar back to serve. Before he passes with three players. Yeah, they're doing, actually four people are passing on instead of two because of Dunbar's effective jump serve. A Q, that's an overpass. Advantage Aztecs, but it's Dunbar with the set. Tried to get Jiggy with it and send it to the opposite pin, but she gets called for the mishit violation. Well, she just set straight ahead to the left front. She would have been fine. Great jump serve, though, forced that yeah. overpass. So here is Rika Okino. No longer just a serving specialist. She is a full-fledged defensive specialist for this squad. Being able to come up with the save there. As Tamiya Reeves strikes again. Tied at 16. Tamiya Reeves putting out some numbers. Four kills, getting 333. Doing a great job blocking with the net. Deja Harris back in. Outside, here's Granato down the line and past the diving Dunbar. Point for the Rainbow Wahine. Now after this tournament, San Diego State goes home and they'll be playing in San Diego for the San Diego State and San Diego Challenge, the SDSU-USD Challenge, where they will also be going up against Oregon State, UTEP, and Louisiana before jumping into Mountain West Conference play. Harris off the block and down. For Hawaii, a fairly high profile matchup coming up here Thursday and Friday against Oregon, currently ranked 18th, but coming off of an upset victory in four sets over the top ranked team in the country, Minnesota, just the other night. That was a huge win. Shocking upset around the country. Shockwaves heard around the country, I should say. And we'll be here in Honolulu Thursday and Friday. Here's Gaskin. Got that one thrown right back at her as Deja Harris was all over it. And Harris has most of his determines right there as well. Well formed block. Seventh block for Deja Harris. Crowd trying to urge the home team on. Gaskin punches it over with the right hand. That's her opposite hand. From the back row, Dunbar dug up by a cue. Here's Gaskin. This time, that southpaw swing over the tool of the block. So we're tied now for the 11th time in this third set. Nice dig by a Q on the turnland swing. 
Granato, tough angle, able to get it across. Pinballed around on Hawaii's side. Granato swings it over, diving save there by Dunbar. Turnlin from off the net, we play on. Here's Granato, harder hit off the block. Lee with the save. Outside, Turnlin blocked by Osea, but out. It was mano y mano right there on that outside pin. Good swing by Hannah Turn on that time. She was doing everything she could to terminate that long rally. High ball to the pin. Yosia hits it wide. And it is a two point advantage here for San Diego State. Mano Mo Santos with one timeout left. San Diego State with two timeouts left. Mafala hears Granato, pulls the string. Harris jumped it up. And Dunbar slaps it over. Diving pass by Maafala. Here's Yosia from off the net. Right there is Turnlin. Advantage Aztecs. Dunbar off the block and down. And just like that, the Aztecs are up three and hoping to extend this match. Timeout, Hawaii. Let's check out how it works, presented by Central Pacific Bank. Chris. Here's how it works when Hawaii puts in a new wrinkle. Watch Angel Gaskin right there. She's going to go to a different part of the court. She's going to hit out of the middle. Watch her come here, right here in the middle. Play hasn't done that all year long. Now they're making it part of, part of their offense. Look, Angel was pretty good there. Hawaii trailing by three, though, out of the timeout. Renato. Tried to pull the string. Pulled out the entire ball of yarn. <laughs> this is the largest lead for the Aztecs here in set number three. Trying to extend the match after Hawaii took the first two sets. Well, they get helped out by that outserve by Hannah Turnley. San Diego State hitting 355 here in this third set compared to just a buck 35 for the Rainbow Wahine. Got some work to do here, trailing by three. Here's Harris off of one leg, scooped up by a cue, but nobody had her back. Well, Harris, so big, so strong, so agile, so athletic. If she gets a hold of it, the ball's gone. So quick off of her feet. Yeah. Dietra Collins Parker saying that she is easily the most prolific athlete that she has had in her head coaching time at San Diego State. And then on top of that, she also on occasion receives some good fortune. <laughs> and it is Aloha ball for San Diego State here in the third. Renato, two hands it in the air. Maafala goes middle to Burns, sort of side swipes it. From the back row, Harris will send it deep. May have been an out ball played by Granato. Bump set to Castillo, they need it. Off the block, a cue there with the cover. Maafala middle to Burns, diving save, Turnlin. And Harris will send a free ball Hawaii's way. Can they take advantage? Burns got blocked and roofed. And San Diego State has claimed set number three, 25-19. And all of a sudden, C-Mac, we got ourselves a match on the final day of the Outrigger Challenge. Nothing coming easy for Hawaii. Deja Harris making an imprint offensively and defensively. Seven blocks, part of a total team blocking effort of eight so far for San Diego State. And they've really tightened up things up at the net. Again, the king on Burns, knowing that Marafara loves to go to her. Burns leads the way and kills, so why not block a key on her? Burns with 12 kills now, still hitting 435. As you see, uh, Deja Harris is right there with smiles all around. She's happy her team took set number three, that's for sure. Harris with nine kills, one error. She, she's hitting the mere 381.
Well, they're doing a dance contest here, and they're showing some of the uh, dance participants in the stands up on the big screen. And so Deja Harris, along with, I think, everybody here in the arena, <laughs> getting a uh, full dose of entertainment there. Funny what happens to fans when all of a sudden they're on camera. What a way out of system. And it's a free chance here for San Diego State as we embark on set number four. However, turn one caught it fat, and it's a point for Hawaii. So the Rainbow Wahine took the first two sets, 25, 21, and 17. But then San Diego State flipping the script in that third set. And they hit 364 in the process of doing that in the third C-Man. Yeah, out here Hawaii by over 300 points. Hawaii with eight hitting errors in that third set. San Diego State with only two. Hawaii led by Natasha Burns, career high 12 kills. She's still hitting 435. Ashlyn Dunbar on the other side leading the way offensively for San Diego State, as is usually the case. 11 kills, hitting 176, but the block again manifesting itself through Emily Burns and Deja Harris. Emily Burns looking kind of like Natasha Burns there on that occasion. Emily Burns at 6'2", also uh, Deja Harris also at 6'2". That's a big block out there for the 6'3", Castillo to face. Sam McGrath out of Oakland, California, also recruited by UC Irvine and TCU, among others, with the serve. Backside, you'll see a no blockers up. And she says thank you. One-on-one. <laughs> on one. Attackers will win that battle most of the time. Yeah, I'm not even sure if you can count that Dunbar got there. She wasn't really in on the scene, and we got a net violation called against Cameron Machado. Machado, an interesting story. You mentioned the wrist injury, and she's still wearing that brace. In their match against Idaho a couple of nights ago, she had to play the front row as San Diego State was running out of substitutions. And so the trainer for San Diego State told her, you can't block because of your wrist. You can't go up over the net and try to block. Because she was playing in the front row, she would go up with just her left hand when she would attempt to block. Teacher Collins Parker saying the trainer wasn't very happy with any of us in the decision to have Machado rotate into the front row. That was a hammer there by Dunbar. Little shot by Dunbar. She's mostly a cross court attacker. That time she goes down the line and just rips it. Three serving four, and it's Deja Harris to serve. Four service aces tonight for the Aztecs, five for Hawaii. And Granato pops it up tight to the net. Easy pickings for Emily Burns. As the 2017 Western State Conference South Division Player of the Year while at the College of the Canyons. Averaging 4.6 kills per set over there in 2017. Number two kill leader in all of the California JCs. That's a pretty good honor. Yeah, no kidding. Outserved there by Harris, though. It's really kind of been this type of match for a good majority, especially early in these sets. We have seen this tightly contested all the way until about the 20 point plateau. You'll see a good serve, but a great pass by McGrath outside. Dunbar off the block and down. 13 kills for Ashlyn Dunbar, and she's now leading everybody on the floor. She's getting warmed up, isn't she? Hey, she gets in a groove. She gets the right set. She gets a good run up on it. Oh, she's tough to stop. A lot of power. She is an elite athlete. It was the 2015 to 16 Female Athlete of the Year for Galveston County over there in high school at Clear Falls. Good reaction there by Yosia. To steal from off the net, diving save McGrath. Dunbar from off the net. Diving save, Aq sends it back across. Dunbar again. Right there is Granato to pop it up. You'll see a bump set to Castillo. Double blocker up. We play on, but they're going to call the mishandle against Delaney Taylor, the setter. Jostled it around in her grips a little bit. 
And it's a point for Hawaii. What kept the rally alive, though, is Akio again. Kita Akio from Kamehameha Kapalama. Wow, what a dig. She's just put on a libero clinic this whole tournament. 17 digs, closing in on 20, which would fulfill a 20-dig performance in each and every game of this tournament. Oh, one on one. Sarah Leva saying, oh, no, you don't. Two really good athletes, eyeball to eyeball there. No approach, just going up quickly, both of them. Leva getting the best of it. Yeah, that was, to me, a Reeves trying to get it by her, unable to do so, at least on that occasion. Here's Dunbar, dug up by a Q, but out of play. Is it me or is the libero play in this tournament, but maybe even just across the board now in women's collegiate volleyball, just getting better and better in an almost exponential fashion? I, I would agree. It's, it's just getting better and better, and we saw two great ones this tournament, especially in uh, Williams from Portland. Because of Kiyo from Hawaii. Yeah. Terry Williams out of Kahuku. So kudos to the local girl liberos here in this tournament. Showing everybody how it's done. Club of high school volleyball here as good as anywhere in the country. Seven serving seven. Here's Dunbar into the twine. That's the risk-reward factor, right? You don't get all those aces without ripping into it, and on occasion when you rip into it, you miss fire. Leva, a drifting serve. Slide goes to Gilchrist in Hawaii, able to scoop it up. Here's Granato, great dig by Lauren Lee. Fell to her backside upon doing that. Little pitter-patter at the net. Gilchrist again, diving save, Okino, well done. Gaskin the dink, diving save, Lee, and we play on. Alas, Dunbar couldn't get it across. What a save by Okino that time. Thought for sure that ball was going to hit the floor, and no way Okino's going to let it go down. Just gives up her body to keep the ball alive. Another great dig by Lee. Defense. Everywhere. Lee wasn't even the starting libero tonight. She took the white jersey from McGrath. And Sarah Leva strikes again from the service line. Well, she's serving from another time zone. <laughs> I guess is that's her second ace, I believe. You are correct. For one leg, Tamia Reeves blocked back. Great job by Dunbar to center that, but Hawaii with the advantage, burns in the middle. Adding to her career night, she's got 13 kills, and that cues a timeout for San Diego State. The Rainbow Wahine up 11-7 in the fourth. Ashlyn Dunbar picking up the pace. She's got 14 kills on 40 swings here and is up over 200. What an athlete. Well, she got two service aces off that jump serve of her. She's got eight digs. She's been in on four blocks. She's a six rotation player. There's a lot of passing. Uh, you know, she's just going to get better and better. Plays she passed that. that one. Difficult pass yeah. there. Plays that serve by Leva and then Angel Gaskin. <laughs> providing the resistance. Bust out the roof towels. This is something that's going to keep Angel Gaskin in the line if she keeps blocking like she is. She does have double digit blocks for the season and is starting to become a little more savvy in that role. Off of one leg, Reeves sending it to the floor. Stick around for the Heineken postgame show coming up right after the match as our corner crew breaks down all of tonight's highlights and statistics. Hopefully, bringing you some reaction from one of the Rainbow Wahine players. Eight serving 12. McHugh puts it right on point. Burns goes off the block. Dunbar again to set. High ball to Turnlin. The touch shot sniffed out on a diving save by Granato. Gaskin 
almost flat-footed. There's a difference between Angel Gaskin week number three and Angel Gaskin week number one. Week number one, Gaskin would have got up and felt like she had to just bury it. So she hit into the Kansas State block, and what happened? She got blocked. Now she's moving the ball around a lot, being much more savvy with her shot selection. Nine kills, hitting 333. Looking like she's enjoying herself, and that's a big part of it. As Deja Harris just continues to put in work into double figures, she goes in kills. That's her 10th. Hitting 409. It's no mistake that she's made all conference three years in a row and will likely be all conference for the fourth time. She's a force out the net. She would be the first San Diego State player ever to accomplish the four Mountain West all conference selections. Here's Granato, goes down the line, Dunbar had it played. Bump said it's Burns, right there is a cue. Granato tried to go high hands, did she get a piece? Yes, she did, according to Dan Hiranaka. And that is a point for Hawaii. Dietra Collins Parker immediately up out of her seat, and she grabs the very official laminated green card and will challenge that call. So they will challenge whether or not there was a touch. The call again came from the floor official Dan Hiranaka, and he will don the headset and he will take a peek at this. He was one who was closest to the play. He must have heard something, if not seen something, but he must have heard something. This is the hardest thing in, in replay to pick up. Yeah, that's going to be tough. It did not look like a touch there. There it kind of did. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> the ball changed direction a little bit, sp started spinning a different direction. It starts messing with you. you. You think you're seeing something that you might not be seeing, or vice versa. But again, the issue here is, is there enough video evidence to overturn the call? Dan Hiranaka says, no, there is not. And so the call will stand. So that becomes a pretty big non-reversal, if you will. It would have been 13-10 instead yeah. of 14-9. It's a big difference. So Hawaii by five, leading two sets to one. McKenna Granato to serve. Quiet night by her standards. She does have 11 digs, but just four kills. She usually averages over four kills per set. What a pop-up by a Q. Castillo the roll shot. A little scramble play here. It's Burns. There's a Q again. Natasha Burns this time is dug up by Machado. Outside Turnlin. Block and roof. You see it was in on the block, but I'm pretty sure Natasha Burns got most of it. Let's take a look and see. Yeah, Burns <laughs> off her right hand. Oh, man, is she excited and happy. For good reason, having a career night. And that violation against San Diego State on the overpass. And the Aztecs are going to have to call another timeout. We'll take a break as well. Hawaii starting to run away in set four. Welcome back. Announced attendance, 3,591 here. On an early Sunday start time. Look at the line for Natasha Burns. 14 kills, four blocks. A pair of digs even on top of all of that. McKenna Granato serving out of the timeout. And call it a good timeout by Dietra Collins Parker as it leads to the out serve. Much needed point for the Aztecs. It was interesting though here, the energy on a Sunday in this arena in what is a match that doesn't have much in the way of consequence regarding the Outrigger Challenge title. That already has gone to the Portland Pilots, but I think the fans understand enough that Hawaii needs to play well, especially as they prepare for their matchup next week with Oregon. Here's Yosia off the block. Up the by a cue. Burns off the block and down. 15 kills for Natasha Burns. Amazing. She has one more year of eligibility, but says she's not going to take it. Maybe she'll reconsider <laughs> after having nights like this. 
might be worth a re-recruiting effort on yeah. the part of the coaching staff. Dunbar, one-hand save, Ma'afala to no avail. But yeah, good energy here in the SSC on this Sunday. Always fun coming out and checking out this team in person. They were even doing the wave during the timeout a couple of moments ago. No place like the SSC. Not when it comes to women's volleyball, that's for sure. Outside, here's Castillo. Nice job there by Harris to scoop it up. Dunbar. That's going to wind up. Far end of the Stan Sheriff Center. And as soon as the opponent shows any sign of sneaking back in the game, let's go Bows by 3,500 people starts. And it can work wonders, that's for sure. Here's you'll see a double block up, and she bounces it off the block and out. You'll see it with seven kills, 21 assists, and 10 digs. Just saying. She had a triple double last time out. Yeah. Maybe messing around and getting another triple double here in this one. Who knows? Right side, that's Emily Burns, scooped up by Yosia Castillo. Quick back up off her feet. Now Dunbar, off the fingertips of the block, right there is Granato. Back row set to Granato. And Machado with the scoop. Here's Burns again. Right there is Yosia, so a cue. Back bump set to Castillo, roll shot. Machado pops it up, but nobody had her back. attention that has been paid to Natasha Burns. Casey Castillo has quietly gone monster tonight as well. She's got 12 kills and is hitting up near 300. And Q, even though Q didn't dig the ball, she had Casey Castillo a pretty darn good set. And Q does, by the way, have 20 digs for the third straight match here in this tournament. That one is hit long by Leva. Middle connection. And what was a rare moment, not solid for Hawaii here in this match. So 13 serving 19. Your thoughts on this San Diego State squad? I think they're going to be good down the road as soon as you get everybody healthy. I think they're going to be a, a really good team. You know, Deja Harris is a phenomenal player. And Dunbar, I love her on the outside. They're, they're going to get their setters back, you know, gonna, and then Blaney may be able to go out back out and hit again. So uh, and hopefully that Machado's wrist will get better. You know, they, they're, their better days are ahead of them, and I really think they could be a force in the Mountain West. Taylor with the ace there, and yeah, you're right. Ten returnees, ten newcomers as well for the San Diego State squad. So Dietrich Collins Parker asked to really sort of mix in a whole other fleet of new faces in new places. It's the most newcomers they've had on a roster since 2011. So you talk about a work in progress, certainly that's what's facing Dietrich Collins Parker and this San Diego State squad. And just as she had everybody melding together, injuries started showing up right and left. It's been a real challenge for, for Dietrich. I, I know that she said that as soon as we get everybody healthy, I think we're really going to be good. And I, I agree with her. Well, Casey Castillo's been really good. The 6'3 senior from Oceanside, California. With a dozen kills so far in this match. And she's done it all sorts of ways. Tip shots, sharp angle. She's gone down the line. Another sharp angle. Going over the block and down the line. She's got all the shots. There's a little deep tip shot, a little like a beach roll shot she had down the line. Did a much better job of uh, selecting her shots. Wahine by five, but you gotta, really, you gotta really admire the way Casey's changed positions this year. Oh man, she's gone from the right to the left, and then the other night we saw her in the middle. Yeah, very versatile. There she is on the outside. Lee with the dig. Dunbar. A Q pops it up for her 22nd dig. That time Lee couldn't conjure up a save on the Gaskin shot. So Gaskin in the double figures and kills as well. 
again, Gaskin taking a little bit off that, making the smart shot. They're trying to blast away. She's just taking, taking what the block gives her, basically. So easily a career night for Angel Gaskin as you see McKenna Ross onto the floor. Gaskin with 10 kills. Natasha Burns a career night as well, 15. Here's Dunbar with the time the jump, and you'll see an easy save. Okino back bump set to Ross, got under it. And McKenna Ross is, we talk about Casey Castillo being asked to do a lot of different things. McKenna Ross, at any given time, is asked to come off the bench and just leap into the thick of action. Exactly, and the players really don't get to uh, warm up that much. She was just called into action at the end of the bench, sort of standing in the corner, and I was like, okay, McKenna, <laughs> McKenna going for McKenna. <laughs> That's right. Gaskin from off the net. Good swing. Decides to play it on Hawaii's side. Ross. Okay, I think she's warmed up now. I just took one swing, that's all. Oh, she saw that block taken across court and she goes right down the line. She was gonna get, get a hand off that end blocker, if nothing else. Leva. Good serve. And he will stay a bit out of system there. The swing by Turnland is blocked in a roof. Gaskin and Burns. Gaskin got most of that one as well. She's doing a terrific job at the net, is Angel Gaskin. Yeah, this is quite easily Angel Gaskin's best game as a Rainbow Wahine this season. No question. Mistimed. And the transition for San Diego State. Mistimed for Hawaii as well, but they're gonna get a chance again. And it's Gaskin. Great dig by Dunbar. And then the miss handled by Delaney Taylor. That's a tough pill to swallow for San Diego State. Golden opportunity there. But instead, it's Hawaii now by eight, 23-15. And we have Victoria O'Sullivan, a six-foot freshman from Albany, California. Onto the floor now for the Aztecs. Leva continues to serve for Hawaii. Here's O'Sullivan doing a McKenna Ross and immediately getting the set on the outside. Aztecs wanted a touch, and without a review challenge, Dan Hironaka and the line judge proclaiming that there was, in fact, a touch. So Wayne Lee reverses the call immediately, and it's a point for San Diego State. I think it was the right call. Hawaii still up. Good measure here. Gaskin dug up by Dunbar over the net. It'll be played by Burns. The set outside to Ross. Oh, boy. Put a little chili pepper water on that one, and it is Aloha Ball for Hawaii for the match. It was another mechanic kill. It just wasn't Granato like we're used to. <laughs> it was a Granato-like bomb, though, that's for sure. It was. And Faith Maafala has 3,500-plus rise here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Serves it wide. They'll keep standing. I guess Faith wanted to play a little more volleyball. What do you think? <laughs> so it remains Aloha Ball. Gilchrist with the serve. Maafala outside, you'll see her off the block. McHugh able to chase it down, Burns on the second touch. Pancake saved by Lee. And sent over by O'Sullivan. Okino back bump set to you'll see her off the net, blocked and out. And Hawaii shuts it down here in the final day of the Outrigger Challenge. Taking set number four, 25-17. And finishing off the Aztecs of San Diego State. I'm sure Robin Amo Santos is going to have some words to say after the game. I can't wait to hear her comments from Scott Robbs here in a minute. Because uh, I think she'll be happy with some aspects that happened tonight, like uh, the play of Natasha Burns and Angel Gaskin and Casey Castillo. 
Jackson in the show. I think she'll say, well, yeah, let's clean up a few things before we play a team that just beat the number one team in the country, Oregon, on Thursday night. But don't you think with the play of some of the quote-unquote supporting cast, Angel Gaskin, Casey Castillo, Natasha Burns, heck, Noreen Yosia with eight kills, two kills away from yet another triple-double, it possibly provides a much needed confidence booster for some of those players as they get ready for a big matchup this week. Absolutely, I, I really, I hope uh, that they have uh, three great days of practice. I think they have to take tomorrow off. So we'll just have Tuesday, Wednesday to prepare. It'll be interesting to see how ready they are on Thursday night. All right, Scott Robbs is with Robin Amos Santos. Scott. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Well, Coach, you've been harping on the middles about getting more involved. I, I thought Natasha Burns listened to you tonight. They actually listened to it. Yes, they did. Well, she did. I knew she was one of them that could take care of North 15, which is, she's awesome. And then that, that girl is like ridiculous. But Natasha came in, did her job. She got up for kills in the beginning and, you know, opened up our outsides. So. Hey, I didn't talk about the outsides. You, you on the left side, Casey Castillo had a great night. And then Angel Gaskins came into her own, I thought, tonight. Her best match is a Rainbow Wahine. Yeah, I mean, we're still working on Temple, you know, with her and Noreen, because, you know, if we run that 6 2. She's the one setting. Um, she's the one that's setting Angel. So we're still working on that tempo. I thought it was a little bit better tonight. All right. Well, congratulations. We'll see you next week or later on this week at Oregon. Yes. All right, guys. Back over to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Scott. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Ashlyn Dunbar is going to get the nod for San Diego State. 16 kills, hitting 222 with 12 digs. Natasha Burns, 15 kills, hitting 433, five blocks and two digs. Casey Castillo adding 12 kills and Tita Q over 20 digs for the third match in this tournament. She got 22 here tonight. She has just been amazing defensively. But C-Mac, let me give you the last thought here. I, I think the, the Rainbow Wahine improved throughout the tournament. Um, whether or not they've improved enough to, to play a team against to just beat the number one team in the country, uh, I don't know, but it, they'll have the Stan Sheriff Center rocking, I think, on Thursday and Friday as they play visiting Oregon, who runs a, a, a really fast offense like Portland did. And uh, they're going to be they're going to be good. It'll be fun to watch, and I think the Rainbow Wahine will be excited to. Uh, to play on Thursday. I, I think what, what's really exciting for them is, to, is I think they're going to be happy about the way they bounce back from a, a real disappointing loss to Portland. As we uh, take a look at the all-tournament team, and it looks like Natasha Burns got one of the nods. How about that? Hey, she had one heck of a tournament, that's for sure. Question is, could Oregon possibly be a top 10 team by the time they get off the plane here uh, in the islands after that upset win over Minnesota, currently 18th as we await the latest AVCA poll. It will be interesting for sure. Hawaii improving to four and three overall on the year. Unfortunately for the Aztecs, that's now seven straight losses. They are one and eight in 2018. Don't forget about the Heineken postgame show. But for now, for Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Until next time, everybody, aloha from the Stan Sheriff Center.